Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. No amount of well-intentioned euphemisms can change the fact that a prison, called the maximum or minimum security institution, call their inhabitants inmates, but the man on the inside knows better. He's a convict, and he's in stir, and he never stops dreaming of getting out. The author of the tale of suspense you're about to hear knows this well. He spent five years of his life in San Quentin Penitentiary, and the story he tells is based on fact. Listen... Listen, then, as John McIntyre stars in Rain Tonight, which begins in just a moment. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Joe? Yeah, Daphne? Look at this story about savings bonds in the paper. Yeah, what about it? Do you think that's the best way to tell people about savings bonds? Why not? Look, see, it says here that savings bonds are a guaranteed investment. Right now, they pay off at the rate of four bucks at maturity for every three bucks invested. Uh-uh. You're not convinced? Mm-mm. Why not? No salesmanship. No salesmanship? What more do you need to know? Why, right now, more than eight million Americans are buying saving bonds regularly through the payroll savings plan. So? So what? That's what I say. So what? Now look, Daphne, if millions of Americans are convinced that saving bonds are their best investment, not only financially, but for the future of their country, what the heck is bothering you? Well, I think they could sell a lot more with salesmanship. You know, slogans and jingles. L listen, if you're spending more and saving less, try a savings bond. Oh, boy. Or, or maybe... Uh, Savings bond pay good like a, an investment should. Daphne. You get a lot to like in a savings bond. Interest, earnings guaranteed. Wow. Well, did I sell you? Yeah, but I forgot what it was you were selling. <laughs> savings bond. I'll take a hundred. Oh, Joe. And now, Rain Tonight, starring John McIntyre. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Yeah, it's like I've always said about these joints. Somewhere they forgot something. Somewhere there's a weak point, and if a guy just waits long enough and looks hard enough, he finds it. Sure. This cell, those bars, got a light? You think I'm stir-happy, don't you? Me? No. But I still could use a light. Uh, here. Hmm. How long have you known me? Eight years now. Eight years and just this one lockup. Eight years and 17 before that and another joint. Thinking the same thoughts you've been thinking. And I'm still here. We're all still here. A man wasn't born to live in a cage like this. He didn't send for us, Ben. <laughs> I know that. I'm tired, Ben. Tired of hearing what everyone's gonna do. All the angles they got figured. Except nobody can tell you how to stay out of one of these places. Uh, that's square John talk. Mm -hmm. Maybe so. But we had it. They've thrown away the key for you and me. And you know it. The only way out of here is through that front gate with a piece of parole paper in your hand which we'll never have, are the back gate and the black wagon. That's how we're going out, Ben. That back gate parole. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Must be some of the boys coming back from the board. You know something that's always struck me funny about this place? What? That. Khan's ringing a bell to get inside one of these cell blocks, ringing a bell asking to get locked up. Where else are you going to go? This is home. 
Hey, there goes a little saint. Hey, Dominic. Nick. Who's calling? Here, 1410. You want something? Yeah, uh, you been to the board? Yeah. You must be getting short. I got my time set. I'm going home in 30 days. Good, kid, good. Listen, Dominic, don't let anyone know your business, especially when it comes to hitting those streets. Uh, the kid's happy. He wants to tell everybody the good news, don't you, kid? Uh, yeah, sure. Kid, there are guys in here that don't want you to reach those streets because they can't. They'll cause you any kind of trouble to make you lose your parole date. Because that's the most precious thing a man can own in here. I don't understand. Why would anyone want to... Go on, wanna... go on, shove off. I'll be pulling your cell boy and he told you. Yeah, sure. Well, thanks, Pop. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> Pop, he called you. Mm, he's a good kid. They're a rare commodity around here. Yeah. Works in the chapel, don't he? Mm-hmm. Father O'Day is alder boy. That's why everybody calls him the little saint. Yeah, quite a handle. Kids should have never been in here in the first place. What was it, joy riding with someone else's heap? That's what I hear. Well, I'm gonna turn in. Yeah, me too. Sorry I've been so preachy, Ben. But you know how it is. We all get a little tight, strong at times. Yeah, I understand. Sure. You know something? What? I think I'll go to chapel this Sunday. Maybe the little saint can show me the way to heaven. Where's the kid? Shh, shh. Where's the kid? Where's Dominic? You can't talk to him now. He's with the father, serving mass. When's all this over? In a few minutes. Okay, when the kid's through up there, tell him I want to see him. Shh, shh yourself. Tell him it's real important. Hey, kid. Huh? Yeah, you. Yeah. What do you, what do you want? I got a favor to ask you. Let's let's take a walk to the yard. W what kind of a favor? Well, you're you're real short for the streets, and a man as short as you just can't afford any sort of trouble, can he? That's for sure. I'm gonna keep my nose clean. Haven't you got some folks outside? Yes. Mother, father, brothers, sisters. Uh, I got two brothers. I bet they want to see you real bad. You them too, huh? I ought to be splitting, really. I got some... Wait a minute, to do. kid. You'll be an awful impolite to a friend. I still haven't asked a favor I wanted to ask. Well, what is it? Man, how would you like to help an old con like me go home? Say, even before you do, how wouldn't that make you feel good? Look, I got a shove. I think you ought to wait, kid. Hear me out. Why? Because you and me are going to form a partnership. We're both going to need each other. Me to make sure I let you keep your health and your parole date. And you to help me crash out of this lousy joint. You're crazy. I don't want anything to Listen do with to you. Listen to me, punk. You see that sky up there? That says storm, lots of rain, probably by tomorrow night. Tomorrow afternoon, I want you to see that I get a ducat. That I get called to see the chaplain. Make up any kind of story, personal troubles, my old lady, anything, but make it good. Because before tomorrow night's over, either I'm going to be free or you're going to be dead. In a moment, we continue with the second act of Suspense. How can heroism be acknowledged and symbolized? Recognition of outstanding heroism takes the form of America's supreme military decoration, the Medal of Honor. It is awarded to those members of the United States Armed Forces who distinguish themselves conspicuously by gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of life, above and beyond the call of duty, in action involving actual conflict with an enemy. For recipients in the Army and Air Force, 
The medal is a gold-finished bronze star with the head of the ancient goddess Minerva in the center. A laurel wreath in green enamel surrounds the five-pointed star, which is suspended by two links from a bar bearing the inscription Valor and surmounted by an eagle with wings outstretched. The ribbon pad directly above is light blue with 13 white stars arranged in the form of a triple chevron. The President of the United States is the only government official authorized to present the Medal of Honor. The award is made by the Commander-in-Chief in the name of Congress, thus accounting for why this highly esteemed decoration is sometimes incorrectly referred to as the Congressional Medal of Honor. Only a very small number of the many millions of U.S. Armed Forces personnel, past and present, have been presented this great symbol of courage to which free men can aspire, the Medal of Honor. And now, starring John McIntyre, Act Two of Rain Tonight. A real storm is cooking up. It's early still, and already it looks like the middle of the night outside. What time is it, anyway? 5.30. You know, I used to like the rain as a boy. But in here, it, uh, it depresses a man. Even sometimes makes him feel afraid and alone. The rain makes everything gray and dreary. Like a preparation for someone to die. Riggs. Yeah, 99439. You've got a ducker to the chapel. I'll pull the bar in a few minutes. Be ready to come out of your cell. Yes, sir. What's with this chapel bit? I asked to see the father. You asked to see the father? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Nothing, but I never quite figured you going to any priest. I got problems. Only problem I've ever known you to have is how to crash out of this place. Suppose you cut the question so I don't have to give you silly answers, okay? Oh, I get it. I saw you in the yard talking to the little saint yesterday. Now you're getting a ducket. There's got to be a connection. Pop, you're forgetting something you and me learned in the streets a long, long time ago. When nobody knows nothing, then nobody can tell nothing. All out, fourth gear. Well... Here I go. You men who are going on ducats, either to school, the chapel, or the captain's office, you are to meet here at five post when your business is complete. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you return here, you'll be taken back to the blocks for lock up and count. All right, when I call your names, you can leave. School ducats. Johnson. Yeah, yes, sir. Jackson. Yes. Chapel. Rig. Yes, sir. Captain's office. Doctor. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's really coming down. Oh, hi, kid. You'll have to wait to see the father. There's somebody ahead of you. Ah, oh, that's fine with me, kid. That gives us time to talk. I can. I've got some things to do. Uh, they can wait. This can't. I thought you wanted to see the father. I do, but you first. Uh, while we're talking, why don't I take one of these books and be reading, eh? Yeah. Let's sit here. Which book should we look at? What's wrong with the Bible? Uh, nothing. Isn't there something in there about... The gates of hell shall never have enough bars or guards around them that a man of God can't lead his children through. Look, Ben, why do you want to see the father? He's getting me out of here. What? Ah, relax, kid. You ain't going to get hurt. Nobody is unless they get careless. I don't want anything to happen to nobody. I just want out of here. I've looked at these walls long enough. I've tried to beat them twice. I've tried to figure out how to go over them, through them, under them. I've rotted in solitary because of them. And it came to me. You and the father. Why us? I'll tell you why. 
It came to me the other day when you come by the cell after getting back from the board. I can see the chapel here from my tear window. In fact, I've seen you go to the front gate area with the father almost every night as long as you've been here, kid. That's a little over two years now. You always carry his personal stuff in a small traveling case. He leaves every night just around this time, don't he? Yes. Well, how far do you go with him to the front gate? Why? I'm asking you, how far do you go with him? Uh, right to the gate. Well, then what happens? I hand him his bag. Is that all? You sure now? Yes. All right, tell it to me step by step. What do you two do when you leave the chapel for the front gate? Well, I... I carry the father's bag, and he tells me about what he wants me to do for him the next day. I walk with him to the gate area, and we get a highball from the gate tower, and then we go up to the steel gate, and I hand the father his bag. And then he goes to the main gate by himself. Uh -huh. I make that steel gate, and I'm on my way out. Well, what about me? He'll think I'm mixed up with Tell you. me up. Nobody's gonna get hurt unless they try to play hero. What are you gonna do with the father? Nothing permanent. He stays right here in the chapel. Just you and me take that big walk. All alone. <laughs> In a moment, we continue with the third act of Suspense. We have, together, ample capacity in freedom to defend freedom. This is NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. By their alliance, NATO nations pledge settlement of international problems by negotiations in accord with legitimate interests of all. NATO nations seek to end world tension, to promote peace, economic prosperity, and social progress throughout the world. The United States of America is a part of NATO. You should be aware of and alert to the objectives and programs of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And now, starring John McIntyre, Act Three of Rain Tonight. <laughs> Let's get going. You tell the father I'm here. No pig Latin either. What are you going to do with the father? That's not your worry. You tell the father I'm ready to see him. Come on. Yes? Riggs is here to see you, father. Oh, yes, yes. Send him in, please. You can go on in. You too, kid. You come in with me. But you don't need... Oh, me. yes, I do. We all stay together. Let's go. Oh, come in, Mr. Riggs. Dominic, you might as well tend to your last-minute chores. I'll be ready to leave shortly. He stays here, Father. Father, he wants to use Shut you Shut up. To... Sit down, the both of you. What? What is this? I'm sorry, Father, but like I've been telling the kid here, I ain't got no choice. I want to get out of this joint, and you two are my only key. Now, if nobody tries nothing, nobody gets hurt. The shiv I'm holding is just as deadly as any gun. I think you're being very foolish. Whatever unfortunate scheme you have in mind will only end up with someone getting seriously hurt... Now, we can talk things out, I'm sure. You're a little too late for that, Father. Quite a few years too late. They've thrown away the key on me, so I'm making my own way out. Now, please listen to me. You can't get out of here this way. All they can do is kill me, Father. They can't give me any more time. I got it all. But why involve Dominic? He's your altar boy, Father. Your right hand. If he wasn't with you every night you leave, the bulls would start wondering. That's why he's here, Father. What you have in mind, how does it concern young Dominic or myself? Am I to be a shield? No, Father, you're in luck. Just me and the kid here take the chances. I can't let you do this. You have no choice. I have a telephone. You... <coughs> that was very foolish, Father. You might have got hurt. Now listen to me. You and me, we ain't too much different in size, are we? So all we do is change clothes real quick, like. I see. You are going to leave here as me. Why, they'll see through the disguise in a minute. You hear that? Lightning and thunder, lots of rain, a real storm outside. You ever try to see very far in the rain? Me and the kid here will be in a hurry to get you out of the rain. The gun tower bulls will be too. After all, the father shouldn't be kept in the rain any longer than necessary. Do you really think this plan will succeed? I have faith, father. What do you have? A prayer that you hurt not yourself or any others. All right, take off those robes, quick. 
I wish you would let me persuade you. Just do as I say, Father. If your mind is set, at least leave the boy here. Sorry, Father, I can't, but I'll leave him between gates for you if he behaves himself. Now, Father, what I got to do, I don't want to do, but I can't take any chances. I'm going to have to gag and tie you up. Now, let's make it as easy on us as possible. No trouble, huh? The trouble is already ours. And I fear terrible trouble. Okay, kid, let's take that walk. No tricks. Everything like it's always been. I hear you. Okay, let's go. Not so fast, kid. Let's make it look natural like. Here. I'll be trying to cover you like maybe the father would, huh? Hey, we're near the gate tower. What's the father say? Quick, what's the father say when the tower challenges him? Come on. He, he, he just says Father O'Day and escort, that's all. You sure? Yes. All right, here we go. You down there! Identify yourself, please! Father O'Day and escort. All right, Father. You may go ahead. Okay, kid, let's go. I'll go through between gates first. You follow quick. Good evening, Father. Sure no night for anyone to be out. Mm -mm. You uh, should have waited the worst of this storm out, Father. Better let me lend you an umbrella. We have one here. Thank you, I'm fine. Well, uh, watch your step, Father. Uh, here's your valise. Father, you forgot your galoshes. Your feet will get all wet. Uh, he's right, Father. Hey. You there, those shoes, the prison shoes. You there, ho! Let go of me, you crumbs. Let go of me. I'll get you, kid. I'll get you. I'll kill that little squealer. I'll kill that dirty little rat. You... I had it me. I had it me. Uh, the, the kid did you a favor, Ben. You might have gone out in that rain and caught your death a cold. in which John McIntyre starred in William N. Robeson's production of Rain Tonight by Jules Maitland. Supporting John McIntyre in Rain Tonight were Barney Phillips, Tommy Cook, Norm Alden, Jim Nusser, Jay Novello, and Jack Moyles. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.